Hello and welcome to my second skills versus capacity vlog. Today we'll be observing two athletes conduct speed and agility drills. Before we introduce the athletes, a quick recap on what we mean by skills and capacity. So first off, skills could be defined as sport or task specific cognitive, perceptual and motor skills learned by an athlete often through repetition in order to achieve greater biomechanical efficiencies, thereby improving athletic performance. Capacity can be described as physical limitation preventing an athlete's ability to efficiently complete a given task. These are generally biomechanical in terms of suboptimal strength, mobility and or flexibility thresholds. However, they can also be caused by a lack of familiarity in complex movement patterns resulting in significant coordination and balance limitations. So an introduction to our athletes. Athlete A is a former professional goalkeeper. He's an amateur footballer and recreational middle distance runner. He does have some historic agility training, albeit in excess of 20 years ago. And this vlog will capture the athlete speed and agility capacity limitations. Athlete B is an amateur athlete. He has 20 years of strength and conditioning experience. He has historic speed and agility training. And this vlog will capture athlete speed and agility skill limitations. Following a robust warm-up, athlete A completes five sets of acceleration phase 10 meter sprints in order to establish a baseline of his current sprint mechanics. The athlete's initial lack of force application makes it difficult to achieve sufficient lean angle and he also demonstrates an adequate knee drive, slow trailing leg recovery and prolonged ground contact time, causing a delayed swing phase and contributing to braking forces. The posterior view highlights some foot crossover which is caused by external hip rotation, likely compensating for poor hip flexor flexibility. We can also see that athlete A has suboptimal posterior chain mobility which will be adversely affecting his speed mechanics. During pre-acceleration drills, athlete A attempts to execute some A skips. In this footage, we see a clear motor skill capacity limitation as the athlete struggles with coordination, rhythm and balance. So I'm going to implement a training intervention program based on my interpretation of the athlete's three key capacity limitations. The first limitation is the athlete's apparent suboptimal lower limb strength, which translates to inadequate maximum force application during the acceleration phase. This hypothesis is based on observational assessment where the athlete completes five sets of 10 meter sprints, whereby the athlete achieves suboptimal linear acceleration. This observation is supported by the athlete's one rep max and back squat being at 0.7 times his body weight. The second limitation is the athlete's lack of movement history in relation to speed drills. As a consequence, athlete has a lack of comprehension regarding requisite motor patterns and suboptimal balance and coordination. Now, this could be construed quite justifiably as a skill limitation. However, I believe that the athlete lacks comprehension to such a degree that this limitation is weighted more towards capacity. The third limitation is the athlete's suboptimal posterior chain flexibility. Athlete A completes wall knee drives at a pace that enables him to pro properly execute the movement pattern in order to learn the correct motor skills. He completes several sets, progressing to switches and doubles and increasing tempo to a point just prior to losing the correct form. These sprint drills are repeated for five sets each. Athlete A struggles to maintain a dorsal flex ankle during each drill, however, repetition of these drills with prompts and encouragement will result in progression. This is particularly evident during plyometric pogo jumps where we see a lack of dorsiflexion and overly flexed knees resulting in a loss of elastic energy that would be generated by the ra rapid eccentric and concentric muscle contractions when correct form is used. Hurdle drills encourage the athlete to reduce ground contact time, which results in higher knee drive and quicker swing phase. Again, a lack of dorsiflexion is evident. As athlete A completes a further 10 meter sprint, we can already see improvements in the technical model, with higher knee drive and triple extension being achieved alongside a more desired joint angles in the elbow, hip, knee and ankle. Athlete A first completes a change of direction shuffle. During deceleration, athlete A relies on the shortened stride pattern to slow down gradually, rather than using a more pronounced dynamic change in velocity. The athlete also presents a high centre of gravity during the change of direction and subsequently is unable to achieve much linear acceleration during the toe off. The following drills are repeated for five sets and focus on more dynamic deceleration and frontal plane movement. 
The athlete is prompted to maintain a lower centre mass during the deceleration phase and to use a more pronounced heel strike with touchdown distance of 4-5 to five inches in front of centre mass. Through a more dynamic velocity change, athlete A will be able to recruit more reactive force strength to more efficiently transition from sagittal to frontal plane movement. During the lateral shuffle phase, athlete A is inclined to rotate his hips and shoulders towards his direction of travel. This may be caused by weak external rotators and abductor muscles. Again, athlete A is prompted to lower his centre mass to provide more stability. In addition to speed and agility drills, athlete A will be prescribed a strength training program which will be integral to his speed and agility progression. This strength training will focus on bilateral and unilateral compound exercises as well as plyometric exercises through all three planes of motion. This will also be supported by a comprehensive flexibility program. The following exercises are recommended for athlete A's progression in speed and agility activities. Athlete B will demonstrate these activities due to COVID restrictions. Athlete A's suboptimal lower limb strength presents capacity limitations with both his speed and agility capabilities. Unilateral exercises will reduce strength differentials between legs as well as improve balance and stability and plyometric training will increase reactive strength and power in the lower limbs while also improving balance and coordination. There will also be emphasis on exercises to work in all three planes of motion as well as a comprehensive flexibility program. Athlete B tends to drive his lead foot in a predominantly vertical direction, creating an overload in vertical lift. This ground reaction force is desirable during the dry phase of sprinting, however, during the acceleration phase when the athlete is trained to apply an abundance of horizontal force, this force application is inefficient and results in a braking mechanism as the athlete tries to compensate. Athlete B demonstrates a suboptimal ground strike technique resulting in the following sequence. An undesirable ratio between vertical force application over horizontal force application. This leads to anterior pelvic tilt as the athlete tries to compensate and maintain lean angle. A high heel recovery follows with the heel significantly higher than the knee and this leads to an extended swing phase. This sequence is perpetuated and by the end of the 10 meter sprint cycle, athlete B is set in a bounding like motion, becoming unbalanced and losing linear acceleration. The following three pre-acceleration drills will be repeated for six sets. These drills are good tools to establish proper foot placement and ground stroke technique. B skips in particular require the athlete to pull his legs back, utilising more hamstring activation in order to produce anterior propulsion. Dorsiflex shuffles also prioritise foot placement, pulling the foot backward under centre mats, utilising optimal reactive strength. In the subsequent 10 meter sprint, we can see the athlete has reduced vertical lift, processes more linear acceleration and appears better balanced at the conclusion of the sprint. Athlete B shows reasonable capability and agility fundamentals. He is able to maintain motor control during changes in velocity, deceleration is dynamic, balance is controlled and he is able to generate good force application during change of direction phases. Postural integrity is maintained during lateral crossover drills where good flexibility and coordination is displayed. During the back pedal drill, athlete B does struggle with the linear change of direction. His ability to decelerate moving backwards is compromised and due to inefficient braking technique he is unable to translate much braking energy into forward velocity. This is an area that can be much improved through relevant plyometric training. During the lateral shuffles we see athlete B is consistent with his speed and postural integrity moving in both directions. Athlete B will incorporate plyometric training into his strength and conditioning programme with particular focus on reactive strength and exercises that incorporate more than one plane of motion. This clip shows some sample representative exercises Athlete B will integrate into his strength and conditioning program in order to, to facilitate his athletic progression in speed and agility. So to summarise, um, we've seen that skills and capacities are not mutually exclusive. Uh, there is a correlation between the two and the degree of crossover can be subjective. Uh, lower limb strength is fundamental for speed mechanics uh, and plyometric and strength training are key enablers for speed and agility. The athlete's learning of correct motor patterns is essential for technical application. Uh, now this uh, is an area in particular where there is a correlation between uh, what constitutes a skill and capacity. And the agility uh, requires the ability to implement speed and movement patterns in all three planes of motion. Uh, and this requires a, a sufficient degree of strength in all three planes.